you're joining us uh, via Facebook, we had a power outage, <laughs> so we're going to continue preaching, and we have this little light, and Jesus is our light, so Amen. Lord, we just uh, honor you through all this, yes. you're in control, Amen. so continue just be with us, anoint and speak through me, and minister, and let your word go forth and accomplish all that you desire, we love you, and we thank you for your great love. So the first thing that shows us God loves us is that he died for us. Another thing that shows us that he loves us is that he wants the best for us. Amen. He really, really does. In Jeremiah 29, verses 11 through 13, it says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. You know, we, we either believe that or not, right? Say, like God wants what's best for you in your life. He really does. And in every person, he has a plan for you. Amen. If we follow that plan in our life, our life is going to be blessed. Yes. Now, it doesn't mean that it's going to be perfect and without troubles and, you know, all that kind of stuff. That's not what it's talking about. But it will be blessed because you're going to be in the center of God's will. Yes. But how do we walk in what's best for us? How do we walk in what God has for us? Number one, he tells us here in verse 13, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Yeah. With all your heart that you're seeking God, that you are spending time with God. Amen. You know, I was just talking to someone earlier today that, you know, we everything that you do is about being with God. The Bible says whether you work or eat or sleep or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Amen. So it doesn't matter if you're at work, if you're at school, if you're at home, or if you're in church. You're walking with the Lord. He's Amen. always on your heart. He's always in your mind. You're, always, you're, you're having conversations with Him when you wake up yeah. and when you get ready for work, when you're driving and going, when you're there. Of course, you got to concentrate on different things, but you take away little time yes. and say, God, I said, you're amazing. Thank you for Amen. being with me today. Continue to give me wisdom and guidance and direction. I just love you so much. Amen. And we, we seek him. We, it's a heart attitude that we give him our all, that he is first and foremost in our life above anyone and anything else. That when we seek him with all our heart, God says, we're going to be found by him. Yeah. That he's going to be pleased and we're going to be able to walk in what's best for us. The second part is being obedient to him. In uh, 1 John chapter 3, verses 16 to 24, he says, This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. If anyone has material possessions and sees his brother in need but has no pity on him... How can the love of God be in him? Dear children, let us not love with words or tongue, but with action and in truth. This then is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence. I like that. Setting our hearts at rest in his presence. Whenever our hearts condemn us, for God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive from him anything we ask because we obey his commands and do what pleases him. And this is his command to believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another as he commanded us. Those who obey his commands live in him and he in them. And this is how we know that he lives in us. We know it by the spirit he gave us. So if you want what God's best for your life, you walk in obedience to him. Amen. You know, we, we can't just live in sin and expect, you know, God's 
blessing in our life. We, we, we can't be doing our own thing Amen. and expect to be in the will of God and his good plans and purposes for us. Right. We, As we walk with that heart and hunger and that seeking him, that's just not asking him for things, but it's getting to know him. Yeah. It's just it's building a relationship with him. Do you know that he wants to talk to you? That he, do you know that he wants to walk with you? Do, do you know that he cares about the littlest things in your life? As well as the biggest things. Do you know that the things that please you excite him? Because he's put that in you. But we, our responsibility is to say, God, I'm going to seek you with all my heart. Amen. And I'm going to obey you. Amen. And as I do that, your will starts becoming unfolded in yeah. my life. And blessings and blessings come forth. Another way that we know that he loves us is that he disciplines us. In Hebrews chapter 12, verses 5 through 11, it says, And you have forgotten the word of encouragement that addresses you as sons. My son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline, and do not lose heart when he rebukes you, because the Lord disciplines those he loves, Amen. and he punishes everyone he accepts as a son. Endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as sons. For what son is not disciplined by his father? If you are not disciplined, and everyone undergoes discipline, then you are illegitimate children and not true sons. Moreover, we all have had human fathers who disciplined us, and we respected them for it. How much more should we submit to the father of our spirits and live? Our fathers disciplined us for a little while, as they thought best. But God disciplines us for our good, that we may share in his holiness. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness yeah. and peace yeah. for those who have been trained by it. Yeah. Thank God for his discipline. Amen. Why does he discipline us? Because he loves us. Amen. Again, we cannot walk in the fulfillment of God's blessing and plan and in life if we are living a life of sin. It just cannot happen. Just like in the natural, right? If my children are being disobedient, they're being naughty, if they're being rebellious, they're talking back, I'm not going to pour out blessing upon them at that time. Amen. I'm going to discipline them. Say, hey, what? no, we don't do that in this household. God yeah. says, hey, children of God, we, we don't Amen. do that. This is how we live. Bless you, Lord. And he allows the hardships in our life. Doesn't mean that every hardship is disciplined. Sometimes the enemy's just attacking. Sometimes God's just testing our faith. You know, there's all different reasons. But there are times where hardship in your life is because he's trying to get your attention. Amen. He's saying, child, wake up. You're heading the wrong way. You're doing the wrong things. I want to bless you, but I can't. Amen. So we need to take our life and say, God, there's a lot going on. Is there anything in me that's not pleasing to you? Amen. And begin to reveal that to me and help me to repent. Help me to keep my mouth shut when I need to. Yeah. Help me to not look at what I should. Help me not do the things that I know I shouldn't do. Help me to start doing those things I know I should do and I'm Amen. just not. Help me to seek you with all my heart and to obey you fully and completely. And God will discipline because he wants you to get back to that place Amen. where he's pleased and he pours out blessing in your life. Another way we see that he loves us is that he delights in you and he sings over you. Let's look in Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 17. Zephaniah 3 17. Says the Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. I love that verse. Right? God delights in you greatly. Amen. Like, think about that. Because sometimes in our mind, right, we think, oh man, God's just mad at me all the time. God is just ready, man, with a big holy paddle, ready to just smack me, right? Because I just feel like I'm blowing it all the time. 
Take a moment to see that God delights in you greatly. Amen. That he rejoices over you with singing. You, you, mm -hmm. that God loves you so greatly. Remember the cross and what he went through. He loves you that much. Amen. Yes, if you need to repent, repent. But don't focus on that. God doesn't. He says, I remember your sins no more. Why do you keep bringing Amen. it up? Amen. He says, focus on me. Don't even try focusing on not sinning. Just focus on me. Yeah. The rest will come with it. So I delight in you. Take God's heart is take delight in him. Take delight in him back. Rejoice over him with sin. Because God's love is so great. If in your mind you cannot comprehend that he delights in you, ask God to renew your mind with the truth. Read this verse over and over and say, Holy Spirit, let it sink into me that you take great. He doesn't even say just delight. He says, I take great delight in you. Amen. And that he rejoices over you with sin. Let that just permeate. This, we have to change our thinking that God is not this, this God that's just ready to zap us at any moment. Amen. And into the thinking of God is a holy God, but he's a loving God that wants to hold you in his arms yes. and wants you to have the best life possible in him, doing it his way. And he delights in you. Take time to delight in him. And then Deuteronomy 32.10 says, He shielded him and cared for him. He guarded him um, as the apple of his eye. Zechariah 2.8 says, Whoever touches you touches the apple of his eye. And Psalm 17.8 says, Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. Yes. What does it mean, the apple of your eye? That means the most treasured possession. The, the, the one, the thing that he loves the most see for God remember God is not like us like for us we may have one or a few people as the apple of our eye like the things that we just love the most above anything and everything but with God God is love and every single person he loves at the same time yeah. as the apple of his eye Amen. That you right now sitting here, he's thinking of you. There's never a moment he's not thinking about you. There's never a moment that he doesn't care for you. There's never a moment that he has left you. There's never a moment that you are not the apple of his eye, the most prized possession, the most thing that he loves. That's just who he is. And we need to stop and let the lights fall. <laughs> and just take a moment to just say, God, thank you for your great love. Thank you that you could love me enough to die on a cross Amen. and go through all that you went through for me. Yes. Thank you that you love me enough that you, you've already laid out good plans for me. Yes. You've already laid out the best life that I could possibly have. As long as I seek you with all my heart and as long as I obey you. Yeah. God, you love me so much that you delight in me. That Lord God, just throughout the day, I, I just want to share this. You know, just, just the other day, the Lord, you know, uh, as pastor, you, you, you carry all this stuff all the time. You're, you're constantly praying for people. You're constantly thinking, okay, what do we do and all the decisions you got to make and all the things you have to do behind the scenes and you got a family and you're you got to do what's best for your family you have all this stuff that's constantly going and 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 you know it can be overwhelming at times and the other day the lord's like give it all to me that's right let it go yeah and he's all have a day that you just do nothing but just what you want just have fun really I love you. Yes. I love you. I care about what you care about. I'm concerned about what you're concerned about. Yes, there's days where you need to pray and you need to fast and you need to fight and you need to warfare and you need to do all those stuff, but there's days you just need to play and relax and enjoy. And God is in all of it. He's in all of it if, if we allow him to be, if we invite him to be. 
But enjoy your God because he takes delight in you. Amen. He knows what pleases you. He knows what dislikes you have. And he rejoices over you with singing. And remember that you are the apple of his eye. That you are his, the thing that he cares about the most. All of us are in that same category. That he cares about you and loves you more than you can imagine or dream. So the next time you doubt God's love, the next time the enemy puts in lies that you're not good enough, you're not worthy enough, God has forgotten you, God has left you, God doesn't care, you remember Amen. the great love of God. God, we thank you for today. And lights or no lights, you are here with us. Amen. And you love us. And you love everybody at home watching God. And I just ask that you would pour out your love in a greater measure that you would even help us to receive that love because sometimes, God, we've been hurt. Sometimes, God, our minds are warped with, with lies. Sometimes we reject your love. And we say, that can't be true for me. But I pray that you would remove every obstacle that we can receive the fullness of your love and to be able to just give that love back to you and to others. Yeah. We honor you today and we praise you. Bless your people in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Well, thank you for sticking with us. And uh, we won't forget this day, right? For a long time. But uh, be blessed. Go in the love of God and love one another. Have a wonderful Sunday. Amen.